Hello, uh, let's proceed uh, with our topic, IFRS 15, revenue from contact with customers, right here, IFRS 15, and we are just going to proceed with how to determine transaction price. And so we took a look at variable consideration, significant financing components, and non-cash consideration in the previous videos. And right now, we're just going to shift your focus on consideration payable to a customer. So what uh, do we do? when we encounter something like a consideration payable to a customer, you know, you have the customer, you expect the customer to pay you, but it could arise that there is a consideration that you have to pay to a customer. In this case, we have to take a lot of consideration. Just consider if a customer has to pay you and also you have to pay to pay the customer, it's either you, you net the amount or you treat each amount separately. That's our main concern here. So you have to be careful. Now let's just go and take a look at uh, explanations on this. Here we are, consideration payable to a customer. Here we are. How, what do we do uh, when we encounter consideration that is payable to a customer? This is what we have to do. So we say, if the consideration is paid to a customer in exchange for a distinct good or service, this is the main point. If it is for a distinct good or service, you pay the customer for a distinct good or service. That is for good or service that is not related to what you deliver. It's totally independent of what you deliver. It's just like a normal transaction. You are selling to a customer, but the customer also sells other things to you. So you are just a supplier, but it's also, it's also your supplier. Then, it should be accounted for as a purchase transaction. So just as normal, just like you can sell goods to someone and someone can sell goods to you. So no need to account for IFRS 15 here. But in case they have a connection, then you have to find out a way to net them. So we we'll say, assuming that the consideration paid to a customer is not in exchange for a distinct good or service, that is, it is in connection to what you deliver then an entity should account for it as a reduction of the transaction price. That means you have to net them. Yeah, this is the point. Reduction of the transaction price, that means you net. So it could arise that you have to net them, but it could also arise that you do not have to net them. That's the main point. So let's just go and take a look at an example and see how uh, we can go about this. Consideration payable to a customer. So let's go here. I think we are almost there. Yes, here. Yeah. So let's take a look at this example. So as to make matters even clearer. So we say, Angelo Gate enters into a contract with a major chain of retail stores. The customer commits to buy at least $20, $20 million of products over the next 12 months. As you see here, the customer commits to buy at least $20 million of products over the next 12 months. The customer has promised us, but has he promised us just like this, or it has, he has promised us this, but in exchange for another thing? Now, look at the terms. The terms here, yeah. the terms of the contract require Angelo Gate to make payment of $1 million to compensate the customer for changes that it will need, this is will the double L here, it will need to make to its retail stores to accommodate the products. Now take a look. If you just take a look at this, uh, it becomes very, very clear to you that in order for the customer to be able to purchase goods worth $20 million over the next 12 months, Gate will first have to make a payment of $1 million to compensate the customer for changes. That means the customer right now has got no uh, stores large enough to actually to be able to accommodate all such purchases. And so Njelwa first has to provide this $1 million. So you, you obviously find that there is, a total, there is a total connection here. And so you cannot treat them separately. So that's the main point I was trying to explain. Now we are told that by the end of by the by the 30, by the first December 2021, Angelo Gate has transferred products with a sales value of four million. So up to now, Angelo has already transferred products with a sales value of four million. You remember, it was expected that uh, it, it should be twenty million, but actually, 
only four million dollars have already been transferred to the customer and so uh the revenue to be recognized actually should be corresponding to this four million depending on the situation so this is what i was just going to ask ourselves now let's go to required required how much revenue should be recognized so i'm just trying to contemplate uh on the amount on the amount of revenue recognized in the year ended at this December 20x1. So that's our question here. So all we need to know right now is actually uh, we expected uh, to have a total revenue of 20 million, but it's obvious that we'll have to refund what we'll have to give back 1 million. We have to give it in advance so, as, so that uh, we can achieve uh, this sales of 20 million. So you have to know actually the percentage that actually has to be reduced from our total transaction price. So that's why here we say the payment made to the customer is not in exchange for a distinct good or service, right? This is, my, this is the point here. It's not a distinct good or service because that, that payment is in connection to sales. It is to enable us to make sales. Therefore, therefore, $1 million paid to the customer must be treated as a reduction because it's not a distinct good or service, so you have to reduce it from the transaction price. This is our main point here. And how do we reduce that? We say that the total transaction price is essentially being reduced by 5%. You need to, to determine 5%, not just reduce it, or not just reduce $1 million from $20 million. Because actually, uh, we recognize revenue in stages, so it might it might reach a point that we do not have to recognize all twenty million. So compute it in percentage. So the total transaction price is essentially being reduced by five percent. That is one million over twenty million. This is the reduction of five percent, and thus will remain with ninety five percent. Therefore, Jellogate reduces the price allocated to each good by five percent as it is transferred. So. By the first December, Njelwa, remember that Njelwa had already sold goods with uh, 4 million. Let me show you here. Yeah, we are told that by the first December, Njelwa Gate has transferred product with a sales value of $4 million to the customer. So Njelwa expected revenue of 4 million, but actually 5% of it are just being given to the customer. So what we have to do here, you just say that, Angelo Gate should recognize revenue of 3.8, meaning that we take 4 million times the rest. 100% minus 5% above, you remain with 95%, which gives you uh, a value of $3.8 million. And so this should be the revenue to be recognized. So that's all about uh, step three, that is recognition, that is transaction price. And right now, uh, in in further steps, we, we would go to step number four and explain it in detail. Note that if you haven't studied anything at all, it's better you start from scratch from the first point because uh, we went here, this was a five-step process. Up to now, we have gone through identifying the contract with examples, performance obligations with examples, transaction price. We have reached here. And so the next point will be on allocation of the transaction price. So this is what I will just go further with. So we just have to make a great follow-up on this example here. Let me show it before going further. Not this one, yes, this one. So I suggest that you just go to this example that is an amount payable to a customer. Thank you very much and, and until next time.